Today, we answer the question, what is spirituality? Many won't like the answer. Some already don't like the way I've started. Some of you don't like the way my hair is or the fact that that I have a goatee or the fact I'm wearing red. But spirituality is spiritualistic freedom. And I will explain what spiritualistic freedom is by the end of this video. More importantly, my intention of this video is to help you see whether spiritualism as a philosophy is the right path for your spiritual journey this lifetime. Welcome to Spirit 360 Fellowship, where we help old souls, empaths, and hypersensitive people rediscover spirit. And by spirit, we mean their spirit self, the part that lives after they die. Their spirit guides and teachers, those who love them unconditionally and choose to help them accomplish what they incarnated to accomplish this lifetime. And their spirit for living, that spiritual life purpose that they incarnated to bring about. This is our talk. It's pre-recorded and live streamed at 10 a.m. every Sunday, Pacific time. If you would like an invitation to join our online interactive Sunday service where we conduct meditation, healings, and receive messages, go to spirit360.org and join our community and you'll receive the invitations as we move forward. Exactly what is your spiritualistic freedom? You see, I'm not here to give you answers. I'm here to help you discover answers for yourself. Because, you know, life is a great big scavenger hunt. It's a picture puzzle, but you lost the damn box that shows you the end picture you're looking for. So you puzzle on things, you sort out things, you find answers. You try to figure out how to make life work. You try to figure out how to make life less painful, more enjoyable, more happy. You try to figure out why the heck everyone else does all the stupid things that they do. And for some of us, we actually look inside and see how we cause other people to do stupid things. Wherever you are right now in your spiritual growth and your spiritual development is perfectly where you should be. And however you are works. How do I know? Because you're here. You're breathing. You still got a body. You may not be enjoying the life you've got right now but you're alive. And as long as you're alive, you're on a quest and a quest to find spiritual truth, spiritual lessons, pieces to the big puzzle of life and life in this universe. When I ponder the question, what is spirituality? The first thing I go to is in the few times I was on dating sites and they said, what's your religious beliefs? I'm spiritual, but not religious. What the heck does that mean anyway? Spiritual, but not religious. If you, if you Google that term on, you, on YouTube, you'll find a very funny college humor video about it. Uh, it's non-denominational, non-committal, can't make up your mind. Spiritual, but not religious, means to me spiritualistic freedom. Your ability to experience those things spiritual on your own time, on your own terms, and for your highest and best good. You know, the beautiful thing about America, the country I live in, is that several hundred years ago, our founding fathers and the women who influenced them decided that they were going to create a government, a system of governance separate from religion. So you are free to practice whatever spirituality you would like to. Some people don't believe that. They think that their God, their book, is the only one that matters. They're walking around saying, my God's better than your God. My God's better than yours. Let me show you all the ways my God's better because my God's better than yours. Sorry for the singing, but I just couldn't resist it. But spiritual, but not religious, is simply that. You go within, you find answers within, and you live your life in accordance. There are three basic rules to spirituality according to my spiritualistic spiritualism as a philosophy. And that's one is you don't cause anyone else to do anything they would not otherwise do. So you don't interfere in their lives. You don't distract anyone and you don't live a life where you are distracted. And what that means is, is you, you basically stay your course, do your thing and don't annoy too many other people. But more importantly, you don't allow others to annoy you. And the last one is avoidance of excess, avoidance of excess or moderation, walking that middle path, not too much of any one thing, a little bit of everything, don't become obsessed and 
lose your focus in life by obsessing on things. And this one has always been the hardest one for me because I obsessively overeat and I obsessively overthink. Fortunately, after the meditation of 30 years and my spiritual practices, I'm starting to get a handle on the overeating part. The overthinking part has been gone for quite a while, but I'm getting deeper and deeper understanding of what overthinking is as I move. If you Google spirituality and you search for answers, most of what you hear as spirituality is a religious context. Specifically in America, you see the the Christian, Judeo-Christian version of spirituality. While I do believe the man Jesus existed and taught wonderful things and demonstrated and exemplified many wonderful things, I do feel the same way that the Dalai Lama does, our current one, that he really digs Jesus. Not a big fan of Christians. Any spiritual practice that is based in you worrying about what others are doing more than what you are doing yourself isn't really spirituality that's moralistic, that's righteousness, that's a set of rules you're trying to follow to to get your life to work. But it's so much easier, isn't it, to point out where everyone else is flawed? I know it is for me. The hardest person in the world to convince that I'm doing something stupid is the guy I meet in the mirror every morning. That guy, he's impossible. The last thing that comes to mind when I think about what is spirituality is this concept of being an atheist, of not believing in a God, not even agnostic, waiting for proof that there's a God. And As God is defined by most people, some intelligence in the universe, some superior being, some great force, some grand architect, some old white guy sitting in in a throne passing judgment, that's not my understanding of God. My understanding of God is simply that God is. But I want to introduce to you a concept in just a minute that I hope will help you understand how you can live the best life possible. And that's the purpose of spirituality. You know, for most of us who are still watching this video, which I imagine are very few because I've pissed off enough people, but some of us somehow know there's more to life than meets the eye. We don't know how we know, we just know. And not only what do we know, we know we know. And we're drawn to this concept of what lies beyond the physical senses so much it's like a moth to a flame. And sometimes, literally, sometimes moths are drawn to the light, but sometimes they get too close to the light. They get close to the flame, and it causes damage. And in a world where 75% of the people claim to be Christian and are outwardly directed in their disdain for anything that disagrees with them, sometimes being spiritual, or a spiritualist, or an atheist, or spiritual but not religious is dangerous. Because people are so wonderful in exemplifying their Christianity and their spiritual beliefs, they beat the crap out of people because they sleep with the wrong type of person or they have the wrong color of skin. That's not spiritual. That's moralistic. That's made by man, not influenced by spirit. If you're like me, you've been looking for answers your whole life. Answers to the question, what lies beyond the physical senses? And every now and then you hear something that rings true, that feels right, but just doesn't really pan out. It just never really kind of comes to completion, if if you will. But once you learn how to go within, to quiet your brain, stop your thinking, to allow your spiritual self, open the spiritual eyes of your soul, if you will, to influence your thoughts, a couple of things happen. And I want to share with you a couple of... uh, uh, Ways I've experienced it this lifetime. So I want you to remember back to a time. For most of you, this will apply. If not, take something that does and kind of substitute the example I'm about to give. But most people I know watched others drive a car for a long, long time. And in their mind's eye, as they got closer and closer to their ability to learn how to drive a car, to get their license... They came up with this enthusiasm, this excitement, this sense of freedom, this sense of joy, this sense of inspiration, and nothing would stop them from learning how to drive, to pass their test, to get licensed. Every time they hopped in the car, they would ask, can I drive? Can I drive? Can I drive? Can I drive? 
the thing about spirituality is, is we have very few examples of people being spiritual all the time. You know, driving a car, everywhere you go in America, you see someone driving a car. So you have a model to go after. But for some of us, we see individuals whose actions are aligned with their values, who are aligned with their beliefs, who are aligned with their words, and they feel comfortable. As I would say, we are drawn to and attracted to their vibration. And as you begin to develop your own sense of spiritual self, as you just begin to allow yourself to experience that part of others, it's just like wanting to drive the car. You want to be able to experience that all the time, to experience that freedom, to experience the freedom beyond the delusions of your outward senses, to experience life through your spiritual eyes. If you have that level of enthusiasm, if that's how things occur to you, every time you hear some possible explanation of something spiritual, not superstitious, not religious-based, not moralistic, not judgmental, then possibly this may work for you. And I've been playing with this now for a couple of weeks. And I'm looking over here because I've got a wonderful view out my window. And it reminds me to get grounded and to breathe and to be present with you. On Instagram, as I scroll through and I follow all the spirituality hashtags and stuff like that, I see all these people talking about God has your back and the universe does this and, you know, hit the heart button or print, type amen or type 1111 if you think you're going to get $10 million coming your way and magically appearing in your bank account or, you know, let go, let God, and all these things. Well, my concept of God, as I mentioned, is simply God is, period. There is a force. I liken it more to the force from Star Wars than some you know, righteous entity sitting in a throne passing judgment. The spiritual concept I would like you to consider is the concept of karma, cause and effect, causation. Your actions cause a result. You plant tomatoes you tend tomatoes, you harvest tomatoes. So for the next week or so, every time you hear something about God or the universe or spirit, substitute the word karma. So rather than God has my back, karma has my back. My actions that cause results have my back. Consider for a moment that being spiritual is being autonomous, is being self-directed. Your spiritualistic freedom is you having the ability to express who you are all the time without reservation. Meditation is key to that because you have to be able to see where you are not being you and that only happens when you're able to quiet the brain to shut down that monkey part of yourself that keeps on throwing crap at all your good ideas. So as you begin to consider what is spirituality, consider that spirituality is simply spiritualistic freedom, the freedom to be you, the freedom to do you, the faith and the trust and the strength and the confidence to be you without any masks, without any pretense, without any hidden agenda, just be you. Spiritual practices allow this to happen by training your brain to be quiet so your mind can share its wisdom as you rediscover spirit, your spirit self, your spirit guides and teachers, and that spiritual purpose, life purpose you incarnated to experience this lifetime. Spiritualistic freedom is your individual personal choice. Developing those muscles, developing that mindset, developing that worldview that allows you to be you no matter what, to find your joy, to find what it is you want to do so badly, like getting your driver's license and finding the freedom that a car provides people in America. That's what spiritualistic freedom is all about. Here's the flip side of that coin, 
it's very easy to be religious. It's the path less traveled to be spiritual. And if you choose to be spiritual, it's never been easier in life to connect with other spiritual people. The only warning I will give you is this. Do your own practice. Trust your own experiences. Accept your own counsel. If something doesn't feel right, most likely there's a reason it doesn't feel right. No matter how right it is for others, it may not be right for you. And that's the independence and that's the freedom that you experience as you master your spiritual growth and your spiritual development, as you increase your spiritual awareness. To wrap this up, what is spirituality? Spirituality is opening the spiritual eyes of your soul to connect with your spirit self, the spirit you, the part that lives after you die. If you happen to be a spiritualist, You can then also start to begin the training to consistently and reliably connect with your spirit guides and teachers. Lastly, as you connect with your spirit self and possibly your spirit guides and teachers, your spiritual path begins to be revealed. The path that your spirit self incarnated to bring about, not what your physical self has been doing. The last reminder is that God is more like the force from Star Wars than an entity sitting in a throne. For the next week, allow yourself to substitute the word karma for universe or spirit or God and see how empowered you feel to know that karma has your back, that life is within your control, and that you have the power to bring about whatever it is you choose to bring about this lifetime. Because indeed, spirituality is the ultimate personal growth and personal power. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Ask me your questions, comments, you have buts um, down below. In the description, you'll find the links to all of our different stuff. If you're new here, if you like what we're doing, subscribe to the channel. There's a red button below. Hit the little bell and you'll never miss one of our spiritual lessons. Below my picture, you'll find a link to our other online spiritualist church services if you're interested in that. Until next time, my highest blessings.